Is it recording now? Yeah, it's recording. Hey, hey folks, what's up? This is uh, Puppy, Puppy, Puppy Chulo here, uh, coming to you from beautiful Montclair, and we're going to be talking about computers today. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm accompanied by none other than my dad, and I'm also accompanied by my PC Agnes. Let me tell you, dude, uh, I first built her back in 2015, and let me tell you, she's definitely got me through. Uh, even though if through only means my 30 FPS of Battlefield 1, uh, they got me through, you know? Uh, for those of you guys in the back that, that haven't seen the video yet, she's my first PC I ever built, and I scrapped her together from old used parts, with a couple of new parts. But she held up pretty good. And first computer, 10 out of 10. No, not 10 out of 10, 5 out of 10. But uh, I wanted to give it out to my dad. He's, uh, I'm pretty sure he has experience in this field before. Isn't that right, Dad? Well, I'll start off by telling you, Walter, that man, you, technology sure has come a long way. I remember when I first, uh, when I was dating your mother, we went to a, to a computer show or a, a computer fair mm -hmm. in uh, Fairplex, Pomona. And we went there and picked up a, a lot of parts, and you, you could just imagine, um, you know, we're talking back in 1996. This is before you were born, by the way. Um, so uh, we picked up uh, uh, all the components. We had, I think it was uh, 8 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I can't remember if it was 400, 500 uh, megabytes in the hard drive space. Uh, I know we, we had a 15-inch monitor, which was pretty awesome. The CRT, uh, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Big and box. and the, the video card, uh, it provided 200, a whole full 256 color display. Damn, that, that was pretty awesome. 256 yes. colors. Vibrant. Damn. Yes. And um, I, I can't remember about the sound card. I don't think I think at that time it was pretty much non-existent. If, if you really think about it. Oh man. <laughs> the, the modem, I think it was a 14.4K. Yeah. Uh, we had a basic CD-ROM. Um, it came equipped. Well, actually, we bought the the the, the, the three and a half inch uh, floppy disk uh, drive. Um, we, we put it together, my friend and I, and we ran it with the MS DOS. How about that? MS DOS, baby, Commander oh, yeah. Keen or what? Oh, yeah. Oregon Trail. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I think I think it was top of the line. I think in today's standards, I mean, I remember spending about thousand dollars on parts. Um, by the time we were done and put it all together, I think computers back in the day they were going for. Pretty hefty price. I think it was uh, uh, close to four thousand, three thousand five hundred, probably so today. Yeah, today's money probably talking about seven thousand, which is you know considering uh, they were pretty pretty expensive back in the day. You know, so everybody was barely getting into them, um, and it was uh, you know it was popular. It was it was becoming popular. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, look at us now. Here we are, just building computers for the heck of it, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Back then, you were running uh, what Oregon Trail. And if you were lucky, if your $1,000 computer could run it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, you, you can't forget about the dial-up uh, speed. Um, AOL? Oh, yeah. <laughs> America Online, 134 hours of free. Right. And I still have my AOL account, by, by the way. Oh, yeah. I know people, people always say, I didn't know that existed anymore. But hey, it uh, still works. So stuck in the past, right? It's, uh, <laughs> some, some things don't go away, like uh, MySpace, right? Yeah, I never go away. <laughs> All right, that's a good one. I think that's a good one, dog. Uh, I think now I'm gonna start talking about the parts she has now. Okay. So I'm gonna go individually. All right. So right now we have. Now All right. So so show me what you got now. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You got whatever. You What's up, Blue? <laughs> Stay right here, baby. Stay right here, okay? Sit. Good boy, be in the video. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay, so, so so anyway, so anyways, um, show me what you got now. All right. So uh, going back to the good old days. You know every computer needs a motherboard, right? Mm -hmm. We got ourselves a B45OM HDV. Now this guy supports Ryzen, so AMD Ryzen and AMD Athlon. Of course, we're not going to be using Athlon, but we definitely have a Ryzen 5, which is the next point. We always need a CPU, the big brain of the operations, the big head honcho, you know what I'm saying? This little guy gets stuff from the SSD, from the RAM, from the graphics card, all the way through to the CPU and runs it. So this is the bad boy right here. But like I mentioned, over here, we got ourselves some RAM. Now, uh, in this day and age, well, actually, you said you had 8 gigabytes of RAM back in the day. That was the norm. 
What do you think? No, you megabytes. Oh, megabytes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think? What do you think is normal now for gaming? Just for average gaming. I don't know. The nice little sweet spot. You want to take a guess? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. So these two sticks in total combined make up 16 gigs. 16 gig. <laughs> quite, quite a little bit of an advancement there. All right. Sure. <laughs> Original eight megabytes to sixteen gigs. Yeah, it's a pretty big jump. Dude. I, would, I would say so. I think that would help. That would have helped me a lot with my graphics. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and then up next. So up next, guys, we also can't forget about the storage. Now this bad boy. Well, actually, let's start off with yours. You said you had what? 400, 500 megabytes? I, I just can't. It, it's, it's a blur now. I mean, it's a 400, 500. It was a big, there was a big difference in price, by the way. So I can imagine. You, uh, you want to take a guess how much this uh, regular hard drive has? Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, venture to say anything, but I would take it in the, in the Tetras now. <laughs> now, I wish we were in Tetras right now, but uh, this bad boy right here is packing 500 gigabytes. Nice. So compared to 500 megabytes, we got 500 gigabytes. Western Digital Black, these are top tier. And they look the same size, huh? Yeah, they're still the same size. same size. It's crazy, yeah, they're still disc and they're still the same size, but the storage only gets bigger. And then I also have a little surprise as well. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, SSDs? Mm -hmm. So SSDs are pretty much all solid straight drives. So you know how this little bad boy right here has actual hard drive, like little spinning discs inside? Mm -hmm. So this bad boy right here stores all its data electronically, all just ones and zeros. So compared to the hard drive, this thing's like marginally faster. Mm -hmm. Good thing right. you can pay attention to your electronics class, huh? Yeah. Ones and zeros and ands and nands and all and Yeah, you know what, nice. dude? Uh, this little bad boy right here costs uh, about the same price as a one terabyte for a regular hard drive, about 60 bucks. But it's half, it's half a terabyte, 512. SSD is a little bit more expensive, but I recommend getting an SSD. That way your Windows machine boots up like that instantly. Well, not instantly, but fast, fast guys. And then lastly, uh, we're not going to upgrade every single part of this build, but we are going to upgrade whatever's in the table plus our last little guy. Now, could you venture to guess what this is in the box? Don't tell me that's a video card. It's a video card, but wow. it's a graphics card. Now. Oh, that's what they call it. Yes, it. Nowadays, the cool kids call it graphics cards. You play games on it. <laughs> Now this bad boy right here, we got a 1060, uh, actually I don't know if it was a TM. See, see what it uh, I think it was just a regular GTX 71 for a second. All right, well, would you say that uh, it probably displays more than 256 colors? Uh, definitely, bro, definitely. All the colors in the spectrum. <laughs> we got yes. a GeForce GTX 1060, dual fans, it's six gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. So five whole gig or six whole gigabytes of DDR RAM. So VRAM, that's crazy, dude. So back in the day, uh, compared to your 256, mm -hmm. this is crazy. This probably plays games at about 2K, 4K if you're really lucky, but 2K definitely about 60 FPS if you lower the settings. 1080p, you would definitely max everything out. Perfect. Makes you kind of think how long it would take you to get uh, the, the Oregon Trail done with this card, huh? Just like that, bro. <laughs> All right, then well, let's move on to the actual computer. I'm going to start gutting her now. Uh, it's going to pain me to start taking everything out, but uh, as they say, in with the new and out with the old, right? Let's go. Yeah, bro, so here we go. I don't know how you can plug in. Did you right. ground yourself, by the way? I'm grounded. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're going to have to uh, sterilize your components here. Yeah, no, that's all right. They're all good. They were all in little uh, anti-static uh, bags. So let's just start opening this bad boy up. Now every every computer to build one, all you need is a screwdriver. That's pretty much it. I mean, unless you're building them from either scratch or redoing old parts and using thermal paste and all that. But honestly, in all my times of building computers, I just need a screwdriver. Pretty handy, you ask me. Right, one tool for the job. That's it. Just check out Al Bundy, aren't you? <laughs> oh, ow! Like Dale Bundy, he could do anything with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. She's looking kind of cute. Granted, back in 2015, you know, this is pretty cool. Eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, 550 Ti. Not the best in the world, but at the time, it could run Battlefield One, so I wasn't mad. But granted, the times have changed. 
And now, since I was gaming on a 550 Ti, nowadays I'm gaming on a 2080 Ti, so, or Super. So times have really changed. There you go. An old graphics card right there, baby. Throughout the years, I still have her. All the upgrades I've had, she's still with me. I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, it would have been funny if I would have kept my old computer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's laying around somewhere, right? No, I sold it. Ah, okay. All right, can you come real quick, please? <laughs> Check that out. Get the graphics card out. I'll get some of the pins out. And then I'll show the case and all that. And then it's the same. All right, so I just unplugged a couple of these cords right here. This one right here definitely goes straight to the motherboard. Uh, right here you can see we have two gigs of, or two sticks of RAM. These both equal to eight gigs, so four each. Right here we have the CPU cooler. Underneath we have a 860K AMD. We already took away the graphics card from one of the PCI slots. Right here we have the SATA. Let me take it out. This leads to the hard drive underneath. All right. This leads to the motherboard. Boom, there you go. USB 3 right there. Which one is this one here? I believe it's... I can't remember what it's called. I don't know what this one goes. Probably audio. Probably one of those ones you don't need. You know, you know how when you <laughs> fix something and you end up with a lot of uh, extra parts? Yeah, little extra parts you don't need, right? Maybe I'll move some of these out the way. Let's see what else we got over here. Oh no, this one right here kind of like a CPU actually. I can get it out real quick. There you go. Perfect. You know how us men are, you know, we got to pull everything out with force. So we got to get it in with force, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, I'll leave the RAM and the CPU in there for now because we really don't have to mess with that. Now time to unscrew these little latches right here. We haven't gone to the actual building of the PC yet. Right now we're just gutting it. So this isn't really that important how you do it. Just being careful with it, unscrewing what you have to. Don't yank out the motherboard. You can yank out the cables, but uh, I say also be careful with that. Do it with confidence as most people say online. You don't want to damage anything, but you also don't want to leave some stuff in there and forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it should come out already. Oh, there you go. Perfect, dude. Look at that. You're, <laughs> you're a genius. Thanks, dog. Means a lot from you. <laughs> All right, as you can see, guys, motherboard's out. Nothing from the old version. Uh, we do have our wattage over here, our power source. You can move it over here. There you go. 500 watts EVGA. I think I'm gonna keep that in there right now because it's still pretty good, honestly. It should still last us. It shouldn't fry the system because it's still pretty reliable and good. We got some fans. I already cleaned it out earlier. However, you could see while I was doing testing, you could see some dust that's still built up. So now that we have that out the way, let's get our let's get the building process ready. Anyway, you guys, that was pretty easy to take out. As you saw in the video, I just took out the motherboard, took out the graphics card. I left the RAM and the CPU on there. Uh, I'll take it out eventually, but I'm, that's not really the case in point of this episode. I'm trying to show you guys how to build a computer, so up next is kind of really important. So let's uh, get this out the way real quick. All right, so first we're gonna wanna open up the motherboard. This motherboard right here, like I said, B45OM. This bad boy should, in theory, support our Ryzen. It's a Ryzen 5. All right, don't lose this bad boy. Don't forget to put it on first. I.O. first, guys. This is sometimes something I would probably forget myself. <laughs> yeah, because it's a running a running joke in the community is uh, people will never put that in or always forget till the last thing. Mm -hmm. And then you know how it goes. Uh, you can relate this to uh, to when you're building something. You forget the last piece, but you're like, eh, I don't really need it. Yeah. But in theory, you're really, you're really gonna need that in order to prevent dust coming in. Then keep good airflow in your system. Nice. Right, we get the manual. Good thing you got experience on this. <laughs> it is, right? If you probably read the manual, they'll probably tell you what it was, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe, but uh, you know how people are. They're just eager to get their new motherboard open like I am. So, is there any stickers in there, by the way? Uh, not, not in this one, unfortunately. Oh, well, we really got our SATA cable for our hard drives. But, I mean, that's important. So, let's get to it. Now, the reason I chose this board out of so many is that one, it's cheap. And two, it kind of, it kind of, in theory, has everything I need. And what I mean by need, I need something that supports my Ryzen, so the Ryzen CPU, 
Uh, the RAM, of course, even though it's only got two sticks, two sticks to put in, that's all we really need, honestly. We're not trying to do a four-way configuration of RAM. One PCI slot, because we're not really trying to do two as well. It's just a little middle, middle motherboard. It's a pretty nice little motherboard. But it also has M.2, so that supports our SSD. So that's something you kind of want to need if you really need SSD or want SSD. I recommend a SATA, SATA little interface. It kind of looks like my old motherboard. <laughs> right? It has PS2 port right there. Look, what's funny is this thing supports PS2. So you can plug in your old school keyboard and mouse with everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you remember those? Nice. Of course. Nice, nice. My mouse is about this big. Nice, dude. <laughs> it's got a little ball in there, right? Oh, yeah. That one, right? Yeah, you have to pull it out and clean it every once in a while. <laughs> nice, my favorite. Now, it's a pro tip that these, you can put it on top of it if you want, because they are anti static. It does help when you build it. Because you don't want anything to shock these little boards, because trust me, one shock of it could probably fry the whole system. You know how it is, right? Yeah. All right, so first, I actually kind of want to go with the CPU. So now we start with a line. Don't forget about this. <laughs> that comes a little later. All right. Don't make it on man. Just a little piece right there, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, that was close to the knife. Don't cut yourself. Now let's open it up real quick. So, uh, we got AMD right here, Ryzen 5. Let's do this. This bad boy right here has six cores, 12 threads. What's well, some Max again? It has 3.6 gigahertz base. So this thing's pretty powerful. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> uh, do you remember your CPU? How much cores it has by any chance? Yeah, probably similar. Some, somewhat similar to yours. <laughs> All right, for sure, dog. There you go. Box open. Right here we got the CPU. Check it out. We call it chips because I like eating chips. I'm check it out. <laughs> pretty neat. It's heavy too, by the way. Yeah, pretty heavy, huh? Yeah. Crafty price, 175 for that bad boy. Uh, I would have paid $500 back in the day. All right. <laughs> Let's see, we got a little manual for it. We got a little warranty, all that good stuff for it. Nice, nice. Can't go wrong with it. All right. So uh, I always get scared when I put these things, but uh, you got to do it with confidence. You got to do it with style. So, you know, yeah, I see it. Okay. Let's see. What would happen if you break the little prongs? Uh, so underneath the CPU or what? Mm -hmm. These those prongs? Mm -hmm. So if you were to break just one single one, it would make the whole CPU inoperable. Mm -hmm. Nice. No, no pressure. It, it's all right though, because it's kind of simple, honestly. If you feel this one a little bit. And then, all right. So as you can see on the CPU, it's a Ryzen. It's a Ryzen 7, or a Ryzen 5, my bad, 3600. And if you look up here on the top, you can just clearly see, you can just clearly see a little triangle right there. So the little triangle is going to align to this little one over here. That little triangle. To that little triangle. Uh, you can't really see, it's kind of hard, it. but you can kind of see it in the video. Oh, I see it. So to kind of make it dumb proof, that way you don't break the pawns, that's kind of what it's meant for. Mm, nice. So let's get this bad boy in there real quick. What's kind of cool about this one is that you get a little sticker with it. Oh, nice. <laughs> you see, actually get a little okay. sticker. Those are the stickers. All right, cool. So, um, okay. let's go ahead and I want to make sure I record this because if you break it, I want to see the reaction. <laughs> I want to see your, your face, how you're going to react to this. So. <laughs> Bad dude. Horizon 5, 3600. And these things always scare me, bro. Do you remember what CPU you had? Intel Ryzen? Now let's place that bad boy right there into the little slots so he falls down in there. Wait a minute, oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even listen to my own rule, I'm sorry guys. All right, that thing's bent. There you go, she fell into place. Now to lock her down, all you really gotta do is this. Pull her down, and she in there. Give her a little tug, a little nudge, make sure she don't come out. Boom, there you go. Mwah. Voila. 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 <laughs> now, you remember this thing you were holding earlier? Yes, sir. There we go. So this is the cooling for it. What's pretty dope is I think this is their new one. So it's like RGB. Anyways, so with this cooling system, you actually have thermal paste already on it. 
it's already pre-applied. I recommend you don't put any more extra, just in case. Anyway, so this thing, this guy already has some thermal paste. Of course, not every CPU provider does have thermal paste. Most of the Ryzen's I work with do have it on the coolers. However, if you do buy it pre-owned or used, most of the time they won't have it on there. So if you don't have it on there, I recommend just a little P drop size of CPU thermal paste. That way it can spread out once you place it on there. Just a dot, but not a lot. Just a little P size. Just a little dab. Just a little dab to get a nice and little going right there. But uh, I'm going to start unscrewing this right here so you can unscrew it and put those in place. Uh, you see that little four pin right there? Mm -hmm. We have a little four pin connector right there. Sure. Boom. Yeah. Uh, we want to make, make this bad boy look as nice as pretty. The only problem is, now we're going to hide it. So it's here. Because you want it to be linked. I know, I know it's like, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's like linked goes like that. It's not going to block a rim like that, is it? Actually, let's go this uh, way. Go. Do that way. Yeah, there you go. Because if we do it like that, it would block our line. Mm -hmm. It's going to get it. That's nice and normal. From the CPU, so let me try to screw it in now. So you want the two points contacting, so the, the processor and the metal, the, the liquid cool, the thermal paste, you want it both touching, that way the, when the fans start to rotate, it actually cools it down. Because, uh, did your computer ever get hot when you started using it? No, not really. I had a, 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 one of the top of the line type computers. Uh, uh, Always cooled down nice and hot, right? Excuse me, Jesus. There we go, give it the pull shake like that. She on there pretty good. All right. Now my one concern was hiding the cables. I wanted to do a little nice cable management. Unfortunately though, that might not be the case for us. I could probably try to hide it. Well, I probably didn't put it in post. I'll try to hide it somehow. I'll make it look nice. But you know how it is, once you have your little setup going, you want no cables really showing, you want everything to look nice and neat. There we go. See? It's <laughs> alright though, just uh, maybe like that, that's fine, right? Yeah. Alright, so far so good. What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> alright, because I don't want the motherboard, I don't want to touch the motherboard. Don't forget about this. <laughs> a little later, a little later. This is actually like doesn't have that much though, let's just go like that. But well, that goes in the PC. It's a little after this. All right, let's get some of this stuff out the way. And thicker. That's a cool sticker we'll put in there. I like stickers. Right? Apple didn't get the sticker with their stuff, but... No. Yeah. All right, then. So do you, would you like to take a guess for what comes next, then? The RAM? Do you know it, dude? We got some RAM. We got some nice, juicy RAM, dude. Oh, well, this is DDR4, right? Yep, DDR4. 3200 megahertz. Pretty fast. <laughs> but hey, look, we got a sticker. Nice. We got another sticker, boys. Whoa. All right, boys, so it's almost as easy as pie. You just gotta see the groove right here with the groove right there. You're gonna match it up, and boom, that's how you put it in. First, you're gonna wanna open these bad boys up, though. Now, normally, okay, these aren't closed. So normally, it would, if you would have a four-way configuration, you would listen to what your manual would say. So you would see two same colors, that's how you would put it. However, with this build in particular, we don't have that, we only have two. So literally, we have two sticks, two motherboard slots. So we're literally just going to place it in. You got to line it up with the grooves. Once it's in there, you push it in, you hear a click, and there you go. Now you want to try out the other one then? No, go ahead. Alright, you're great job. You're doing a great job. Alright. If you break it, you break it. <laughs> yeah, no, these things are both the last, bro. Let's see. Unfortunately, these don't sport RGB or cool rainbow uh, looking colors. I figure if, if you break it, I mean, I don't want to buy a, a broken component. You know what I'm saying? Alright. There you go. That should be it. Pretty easy. RAM's all good to go right there. 
All right. So now we have a special kind of storage. The SSD. Bad boy right here, we got our SSD by Intel. SSD 6. Let me tell you guys. She's pretty cool, dude. This is just sticker. Let's just stick it in the Alright, boys. <laughs> I get OCD. Alright, so this is what we call an M.2 SSD interface. Ooh, me. We got a little instruction manual right here. Solid state drive. And then right here, we got a little SSD. Got it right here in the box. Now, this bad boy right here is pretty powerful. And by being powerful, I mean pretty fast. Let's see. I believe this is the little, this is the little screw for the SSD. So can you guess where we're gonna put this M.2? Yeah, the little slot, bro. The Ultra M.2. There you go. Let's open it up. <laughs> it's pretty funny though. It looks almost like a USB, huh? Underneath or on top. Get a fast USB. 512 mega gigabytes. Yeah. Gigabytes. Uh, 10 point, uh, I forgot what he said. <laughs> something, something, something gigawatts. All right, hold on. Just insert this bad boy in there. There you go, make sure she's all the way in there. You don't want it to stick out a little bit and then you get slower speeds or it doesn't read at all. Now for this little screwdriver, you're actually gonna put it right there so it can go down. You don't want to block off the video card that you're gonna put in later on. So it stops it right about there. However, we do need, I don't know if my regular screwdriver is going to fit here. You may need a smaller one. But this may just work. Alright, just making sure it's not going to come out like as soon as I move it. So yeah, there you go. You got an M.2 in there. 512 meg gigabytes. I keep saying megabytes. You brainwashed me. <laughs> That's uh, going back in time. Yeah, I know. I'm going back in time. 512 megabytes. What is this? 1998. Pieces out. Out with the old and with the new, right? Now, like you always said, don't forget about this piece, mm -hmm. right? Just like when you're building a table and you're doing some electric electric work, you never want to forget something to them. You're gonna need it later on. You never want to end up with extra screws in your pocket. There you That's go. I gotta say. Whatever you said. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of which way was it originally. <laughs> this always boggles my mind, but hey, if I can build a computer, I can figure out where this goes soon, right? Okay, that can't be that easy. <laughs> All right. That's the right way. Yeah, but I can read on the back. I can also read on the front. Uh, that's the opposite way, I believe. Yep, all right, perfect. So now it's time to put this bad boy in there. Now you're gonna wanna align them to these slots in the back. That way when you screw them in, you can screw them in nice and easy. You won't have a problem. So let's get the cables out the way, nothing's in the way. Align it in the IO slots. The I.O. ports, and then you're going to want to align them with the screwdrivers that. Look at that. This one was actually pretty easy. Probably because I already put it in before. All right, so let's get those old screws and screw them in real quick. Come on, don't cut yourself short. That's probably because you're getting good at this. Thanks, no, I appreciate you. Don't want to damage the board, but you don't also want to make it too loose that your motherboard falls out. So I say once it starts giving you a little feedback, a little pushback, then you stop. That way you don't ruin the screws as well. Or what's the term again, Dan? How do you... How do you call it when uh, you run the screws on top? Or you, you strip them? You strip them, there you go. You don't want to strip the screws, because then how are you going to take out your motherboard when you want to upgrade it or change it or whatever? <laughs> it's kind of hard. See, this is why I recommend doing everything you can right off the bat on the motherboard. Because trying, even trying to screw this in right here, it's, it's, it's a pain in the neck, bro. Imagine trying to stick in a RAM and CPU with this cluttered little space, bro. I do not recommend. If I remember correctly, that's what we did. <laughs> that, did it take a while? Yeah, but back then my, my hands were very little, little hands. <laughs> you can only imagine right now, bro. 
Now I believe this time we might actually have more screws. We might have extra screws in our pocket. <laughs> Not for a bad reason, but just because this motherboard is a bit smaller. So look, the other one, the other one I believe came all the way out to right oh, I here. See. I see. Okay. So alright, so that should be it then. So now I'm going to start plugging in some cables, some important cables, like of course the CPU one we had in earlier. Let's see. All right, guys, while you guys were gone, I, had, I made some little modifications. My camera died, but from the back, you can tell all this cable management I try to do. It's pretty all right so far. It's not as bad, not as crazy. Uh, the reason I wanted to get back here was to rearrange some cables underneath and wire them to the motherboard to make it look a little bit nicer. And then I also wanted to add the new, the new hard drive in here, which is pretty easy. Um, one tip I would like to give, this is the old one right here. Uh, the power goes on the left. You will see a power cable that's similar to it. So you'll plug this in for power for most of these big hard drives. And then you'll plug in the small L-shaped SATA cable into the right side right here. That way you'll be able to transfer power and transfer. Pretty simple. Uh, some of the laptop hard drives don't necessarily need power. I mean, you do theoretically, but sometimes they can operate without it. And SSDs also work the same way as well. Though. Well, let's do this. All right, let me close up the back real quick because I think there's no more in the back. All right. All right, let's do this. So lastly, we need the graphics card. A very important step because without it, you really can't be playing any games, honestly. I mean, you could play games with just CPU alone, However, it still wouldn't be powerful enough for it. Now, as you can see, you can see the little grooves right here. This is where you're going to be entering it in from the piece that I saw. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me get some light in there. Well, me. Thank you. Thank you, young man. <laughs> the tides have turned, huh? Oh, you know what? Hey. Only when you're doing your videos, you can tell me what to do. All right. Thank you, young man. <laughs> All right. So we're going to enter this bad boy right here. Make sure, make sure the clip right here is open. You don't want to have it closed and then try to stick it in because, you know, us guys, you know how we are. We always like to stick it in or whatever. Stick it in until you hear a click. Nice and neat right there. Perfect. Now you're going to want to screw it in. That way she doesn't move. You don't want a graphic start to come out while you're using it. Or worse, you don't want to break your $300, $200, $5,000 graphics card. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, those do exist, that. $5,000 graphics cards. Can you believe that? That'll be the day. <laughs> well, I almost got there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'll be the goal one day, right? Uh, there, it's a PCIe slot. I see it. That's for the six pins right there. I see it. Now we're going to plug it in. You see the two little extras? Most some cards do need two extras, like mine, for more power. However, this one will need six pins, so you're just going to slap it in like that. And you can see it, right? just pop it. You get it? All right. Oh, Perfect. That's it. Power. All right. Did you, did you unlock something up there earlier today? What do you mean unlock? Yeah, you said make sure this thing is in low unlock or like something in the stuff in there. Yeah, don't make sure it doesn't come out, but that's good right there. Uh, let's see. Anything else needed? I believe that should be it. Everything's plugged in. Everything looks nice and neat. And there you go, we got, a, we got ourselves a nice little beauty, dude. I mean, it's a plus, but uh, not the greatest, but you know, it works. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys in post. Let's see how it posts up. Yeah, let's see, you guys let's see. Little bit. Let's see how it works. All right, bro, let's see if she posts, dog. Oh, shit, she turned on. Oh, it doesn't have the lights. Let's see if she, uh... See if she turns on though. Wow. 
I think that the HDMI was broken. Oh, wait, 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 it turned blue. Oh, shit. It posted. All right, let's see if the Windows thing comes up. If it does, then we in it. Looks like we in, boys. We got Windows. Looks like we in. It posted and she be working. Time to set it up and I'll get back to you guys. Anyways, guys, there you have it. Agnes 2.0, she's looking pretty good. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos about me building computers or just my funny little skits, don't forget to subscribe or smash that mother truck and like button, dude. If you want to see maybe Agnes 2.0 in uh, action, don't forget to subscribe. I will be posting some stuff later on. I am downloading games for her. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you later.